Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 66 of C Sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about overloading indexers. Please watch part 64 and 65 before proceeding with this video. We'll be working with the example that we started in part 65. Now, if you remember, in part 65, we implemented an indexer that has an integer parameter. Notice this indexer that we implemented, it's accepting employee ID as its parameter. For the given employee ID, this indexer is going to return their name. Similarly, this indexer can also be used to change the employee name. For example, let's flip to this web form one. Here we are creating uh, an instance of the company class which has this indexer. Now let's say within this company, I want to retrieve the name of an employee whose ID is two, then all I need to do is pass number two to the indexer and look at the return type of this indexer it's string meaning it's going to return the name of that employee now if I want to change the name of this employee to mark all I need to do is set that name like this so this piece of code is going to change the name of this employee with ID is equal to 2 to mark okay now at the moment this company class has got only one indexer and it's taking one parameter which is of type integer now remember, methods can be overloaded based on the number and type of parameters. Similarly, indexers can also be overloaded based on the number and type of parameters. At the moment, our class has one indexer and this indexer has an integer parameter. Okay, now let me copy this and paste this piece of code here. Now if you look at these two indexers, they are identical, meaning both of these indexers are having only one parameter and both of these parameters are of type integer. So obviously when I compile this project, I'm going to get an error. Look at the error. Type demo.company already defines a member called this, which is nothing but the indexer, with the same parameter types. So the parameter type is the same thing. So I'm going to get a compiler error because you cannot have indexers with the same number and type of parameters, multiple indexers. That's not possible. Now on the other hand, I can have something like this, int maybe age. Now if I build this, look at that. Will I get a compiler error? Notice on the status bar, build succeeded. Now I don't get a compiler error. Why? Because you know though this is an integer parameter, I have another parameter here. So that's how, you know, when I actually try to use these indexers, look at this, when we flip to the web form and let's say company and then when I open the square bracket, notice that it shows there are two indexers. The first indexer takes only one parameter of type integer and then if I click on this, you know, down arrow, look at that, it shows the other indexer which has got two parameters. Okay, so basically to distinguish between which indexer we want to invoke, you know, uh, you can only overload indexers based on the number and type of parameters. Now, let's say I want to implement another indexer here, which is going to return the total number of employees by gender. For example, you know, let's, um, in, in my company, I got, I've, at the moment we have, you know, eight employees here. Okay, now out of these eight employees, if you look at the female employees, there are one, two, and three. There are three female employees and five male employees. Now what I want to do is something like this. I should be able to print the total number of male employees. So response.write total male employees is equal to. Now I want to use the indexer, you know, on this company object and pass gender to it. Okay, and this indexer should return the total number of employees to me. Now look at this, I have a red squiggly here, you know, showing that as an error because um, at the moment this company doesn't have any indexer that takes string parameter. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement something like this. Okay, and to do that, what I'm going to do, so here we have an indexer. So let's get rid of these two parameters and let's pass in a string parameter and of type gender. Okay, so I mean gender is the name of the parameter. So basically what we want to do, we want to, you know, when I pass in gender, you know, something like male here, I want to get the list of the count of all male employees within the company. Okay, so what are we passing here? Male. So what I'm going to do here from this list, I'm going to use a link function called count. 
So within that list, we are invoking the count function. So for each employee within that list, if that employee gender matches with what we are passing in. So what are we passing? For example, on our web form, if you look at our web form, we are passing male. So when male is passed, it will check, OK, is the passed in gender male matches with the employee gender within this list? If yes, then you know it's going to count all those employees whose gender matches, and it's going to return that back. Now look at the return type of this count function. It's an integer. OK, but what is the return type of our uh, indexer? It's a string. So let's convert this to string using the toString method. So that's our get accessor. Now what else I want to do? I also want to implement the set accessor, meaning I want to change the gender of employees. For example, you know, something like this. If I say company of male, so I want to change the gender of all male employees to maybe something like this, female. Is this possible? Absolutely. So, um, you know, all the male employees' gender, change it to female. Okay. So let's implement the set accessor for our indexer. So here, what we are passing in, we are passing in gender. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to loop through each employee object. So for each employee in the list employees, if the employee dot gender is equal to the gender so here what we are passing to the indexer we are passing in male so we are looping through each employee if the gender of that employee matches with male which is passed in then what we want to do we want to set that employee gender to whatever value that we are setting it to. So here, what is the value that we are assigning? Female. So the male employee's gender is female, because this value is going to receive whatever you assign after equal to. So we are changing the gender to female. OK, so we have the indexer here. Now, let's actually make some changes to properly test this code. So this line is going to print total male employees. And let's also print total female employees. So for that, we need to pass female here. And this one is going to be before update. So response.write. Before update. And then let's print an HTML break so that the output comes in a separate line. All right. So let's copy this and then have another HTML break. Let's have two HTML breaks here. And then look at what we are doing here. This line, you know, before update, if you remember within our company, we've got five female, I mean, five male employees and three female employees. So obviously, these two lines should, I mean, this line should print three male employees, and this line should print, you know, the number of female employees, which is uh, five. Female, I mean, female employees are three, and male employees are five. And then here, we are changing the gender of male employees to female. So after this line is executed, the number of tot I mean, total number of male employees will be zero, but total number of female employees will be eight. So let's uh, copy these two lines, and then paste them there. So we are basically um, printing the total number of male and female employees before and after update. So let's copy this line. So this line is going to change the gender of male employees to female. And let's call this after update. And then let's have an HTML break after that. OK. So with these changes, let's go ahead and run so obviously, when the web form renders, you know the first two lines uh, should print, you know, the number of male employees. Look at that: total male employees five. That's before update, okay? And total female employees three. 
but after update look at that total male employees is zero and total female employees is eight okay so we are able to you know change the gender of the employees using this indexer and using this indexer you know when when when, when we pass male you know um, here it's going to invoke the get accessor of our indexer that takes a string parameter okay and this is going to return you know all the employees uh, whose gender is male for this piece of line okay and this line is going to invoke the set accessor of this indexer that takes the string parameter all right so in this video we have seen how to overload indexers based on the number and type of parameters on this slide you can find resources for asp.net c sharp and sql survey interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day